What's up guys? We're gonna go get some gas. And we might try to find a little spot to do some wheelies. Oh, it's almost firework time for everybody now. Another firework stand, boys. I've been there last year. He's got some crazy stuff in there, dude, believe it or not. You got these firecrackers that are about twice the freaking sound of a, a gunshot. They sound insane. Sound like a freaking bomb going off. They're pretty big. Man, it's a nice day. It's perfect. Perfect temperature. Nice and sunny. Look at the river out there. It's such a nice view. Pipe sounded gnarly up against that railing. I like this bike. Guess while we're out here on this ride, ooh, cop right there. That ain't no cop. What the hell? That was like a straight pipe V6 with a freaking. What was that? It had a spotlight on the side. You know, over here, there's a cops had the spotlight, and it was like a straight pipe V6 charger. That thing sounded awful. Anyways. I guess while we're out here, I've had this 2020 Kawasaki Z650 for about a year now. And I guess I can give a little bit of my thoughts on it. It's a really good bike. I mean, you can't really go wrong with it. Um, it does kind of leave you wanting more. It is just a 650, so that is to be expected. It's got good power. I mean, if you're not a speed demon, you would probably be fine on this bike for a very long time. But I started on this bike. This is my first motorcycle. But when you ride some of the other bikes, like the MT-07, you get back on this thing, and you kind of wonder, I don't know, how they got more power out of that Yamaha. I mean, this bike's got good power. It's quick. It's not much slower than the Yamaha, the MT-07, but it's just, it just feels a little bit more lazy compared to the Yamaha. The power on the saying, I haven't got it tuned yet, I'm probably going to get it tuned here soon and see if this helps. The throttle's a little jerky on it, which I, I've gotten used to. It'll kind of teach you some throttle control, and everybody's out today. It's a little bit herky-jerky on the throttle, like... I mean, that's six gear and I'm just rolling on and off. I mean, it throws you back and forth. It's also, there's a little bit of hesitation where the Yamaha does, doesn't have that kind of hesitation to it. It's just the power is a lot smoother and more accessible on the Yamaha than it is on the Kawasaki. So, if you like doing power wheelies and all kinds of stuff like that, you might want to go for the Yamaha. You can still wheelie this thing, which I could show you all here in a little bit after we get gas. But you do get a little bit better power delivery with that Yamaha. The thing I do like about this bike a lot more than the Yamaha. Definitely this dash. Let's look at that dash. I really like the TFT dash on this bike. I've always liked it. Uh, most of the other bikes I've ridden have not had TFT dashes. The Yamaha MTL7 does not. It has kind of a reverse LCD kind of thing. Which is nice. It looks cool. I just like this TFT. One big thing I noticed between the Yamaha and the Kawasaki is the transmission on this bike feels a lot smoother. So I'm going to show you. We do have power to get up and go. definitely get up and out of the way with this bike very easily it's got plenty of power for a beginner or an intermediate rider the transmission smooth it shifts very smoothly I like the transmission the only my biggest complaint about the transmission is going to be this this clutch now on the Yamaha I don't know if that bike has a slipper clutch but the clutch is way tighter than this the release zone or the friction zone on this clutch is so wide. 
like you you can keep letting it out letting it out it just keeps slipping until you let it all the way out i'm not sure if it just needs to be adjusted but it just does not catch quite as good on this bike very light the tires that come on it the uh, dunlops i'm not a big fan of i have the michelin row sixes on this bike and they, it is night and day difference how much better these tires are than those Dunlops. These tires are amazing. I highly recommend getting some Michelin Road 6s or Road 5s or whatever you want. Put on this bike, it changes it completely. The suspension is really nice on this. It's not like super, super crazy good for track riding. I've never taken it on the track. But I would assume it's probably not the greatest for the track because it is, it's pretty soft for the most part. But it's also got a good amount of stiffness to it. I don't really get any nose dive or anything going into some hard turns or anything like that. It's very planted bike. It turns like a dream. I love the way this bike turns, especially I put some rental bars on it. I made these bars a little bit wider, but the stock bars are a little more narrow and sweat back. And I like these wider bars a lot more. It gives me a little more leverage over the bike. Downshift nice and smooth. So smooth in the turns. It just falls into place and she stays there. I'm gonna go this way. Let's see if we can do something here. I mean, you can get it up as you can see. I'm just not confident enough to hold it. <laughs> it's a very good bike for a beginner. It's very forgiving, especially with that clutch. It's very easy to learn to clutch because it has such such a wide release point on it and you can get pretty aggressive on this thing too it's also really easy to, to maneuver this thing slowly too it's so light and the clutch is easy to feather because of that wide grab point on it so you can really maneuver this thing when you're going slow the brakes are good. I like the brakes. No complaints about the brakes. The back brake doesn't do much, but I mean, you do 70% you do of your braking with your front. So that's good. ABS, nice to have. You can get these in ABS and non-ABS. This is, a, is an ABS model. I noticed that about the MT-07 when I first rode it, when it was bone stock, when you were really getting on it, not sure if it's just because it's got more a little bit more torque but it was very twitchy in the bars like if you slammed your your throttle back down like really getting into it it would shake a little bit it would kind of go back and forth which last time i rode it i didn't really get that feeling like i did last time but this this bike does not do it. you don't get any wobbles or anything out of this one gears out so fast but you can get it up you can definitely get it up and have a little fun with her as far as the way you sit I mean you could tell this bike is kind of made for a, a shorter rider because your legs are pretty I mean I'm about 5'10 5'11 um, my legs kind of fit tuck right up into the tank if you were any taller, I wouldn't really think you'd be very comfy on this bike. Um, I mean, my arms are pretty drooped down. We'll get a little turn action in here. I don't think I want to go over there today. Yeah. Such a smooth turning bike. Very confidence inspired. Yeah, the seat, the seat's all right. I mean, they have a comfort seat. It brings it up a little bit more. 
uh, it makes the bike a little taller. So if you were a taller rider, you probably would want that comfort seat because it is pretty low. I mean, I'm not very tall at all, and I can flap with this bike easily and my, with with bent knees. The motor's decent in this bike. I mean, it gets the job done. It's got good power, um, especially when it's stock. It just doesn't make as much cool noises as the rest of the bikes. I mean, it's just that typical parallel twin sound, just screaming in your ear. But it gets the job done. It doesn't quite sound like a three or like a 300 or a 400 or anything like that. It's got a little bit more of a growl to it since it is a little bit bigger. So it's not as ear piercing. But I, to, I mean, it sounds it sounds all right. I've got 10,517 miles on this bike. I've never had an issue out of it. Only thing is I've had to do to it, replace the tires, obviously clean the lube the chain, adjust the chain and everything. Um, I've done an inspection on it. Everything seems fine on it. I mean, oh yeah, I changed the oil too. I change the oil every 3,000. Oil's always been nice and clean in there, so hasn't been no surprises. It's a Kawasaki. It's the same 650 motor that they've been using for years, so it's pretty tried and true bulletproof power plant. We can get down on some of these turns. I keep this and do like a stunt bike build with it or should I just sell it and then go with like a supermoto or something I think a stunt bike build would be pretty cool people stunt these sometimes it is not a bad bike by any means I absolutely love my Z650 I just think this thing's probably, in my opinion, I think it's probably the best looking. I am biased still. I love the headlight and the angular styling of it. And it sounds alright. <laughs> and then none of them have a cooler dash animation. Oh yeah, Kawasaki. Yeah, that's my my amateur thoughts on my Z650 that I've ridden for a year. I love it. If you're looking at one, consider it. It's a good bike. You won't really be hung out to dry by your friends who bought the MTL7. Um, you can still have a lot of fun. There's a lot of things you can do to it. So, consider the Z650. It's a really good bike.